Hey guys, we continue to look at the darkest day in human history, where Jesus has been betrayed and abandoned by some of the people that are closest to him. Uh, he's endured several unjust and unfair trials. He's been beat and spit on, and, and he's been scourged and mocked by the Roman soldiers. And now he's been nailed to a cross. And we're going to look at some of the events and some of the people and the things that they say is Jesus is just hanging there on the cross. So we're picking up, we're in Mark 15 and verse 27. With him, they also crucified two robbers, one on his right and the other on his left. So the scripture was fulfilled that says, and he was numbered with the transgressors. And those who passed by blasphemed him, wagging their heads and saying, ah, you who destroyed the temple and built it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priest also mocking amongst themselves with the scribes, saying, He saved others, he himself he cannot save. Let the Christ, the King of Israel, descend now from the cross, that we may see and believe. And even those who were crucified with him reviled him. Jesus is hanging between two thieves, two sinners. And I think on one hand that seems appropriate because Jesus spent so much of his time with sinners. But on the other hand, it just shows how they viewed Jesus. That he was no different than them. He was just like an everyday common criminal. We kind of glorify the cross up a little bit, you know, because what it means for us. But for them, it was just a tool of uh, execution. It was a means of killing criminals, like the guillotine back in the 1700s or the electric chair for us today. Except we like more humane and less painful ways of killing somebody. They didn't have those aspirations back then. Crucifixion was very slow, painful way of dying by asphyxiation. You know, they would hang there until they couldn't pull themselves up anymore by their arms or push themselves up by their feet. And their lungs would just fill with water until they couldn't breathe anymore. They would just drown to death. What a horrible way of killing somebody. And kind of keeping our eyes on, or our thoughts on the thieves, it says, later on, it says that those who were with him, those who were hanging on the crosses next to him were actually reviling him. And we know from the other accounts that there was at least one that had a change of heart while he was there. And look at all the people that are around the cross and the things that they're saying. You know, they're mocking and taunting him. They're saying things like, well, you said you could tear down the temple and rebuild it in three days. You know, surely if you could do that, then you could take yourself down from the cross, save yourself. Like he couldn't do it. And they get shows that they had no idea what he was actually saying teaching what he was saying uh, because here he is here they are in the process of tearing down the temple and three days later he would rebuild the temple he would resurrect from the dead and then the chief priests and the scribes they're taunting him as well he saved others but he himself he cannot save you know they don't understand that the fact that he chose not to save himself is the means by which he is actually saving others including themselves that that if he had saved himself thankfully he didn't because if he did we would have no hope of being saved. And they were saying things like, well, if he really was the Christ, then he would come down from the cross and we would believe. Would they believe? I don't think they would. They didn't believe when he was saving others, when he was healing people from their sicknesses or raising them from the dead or casting demons out of them. They didn't believe then. Three days later, when he was resurrected from the dead, they still didn't believe. I don't think they would believe. Think about it this way. How would you feel if somebody was mocking and taunting you like they were him? I'd feel really little, really helpless. Especially if they were crucifying me and saying those things to me because I would have no power to be able to do anything about it. But Jesus did. Jesus had the power to do something about it, but he chose not to. He restrained himself. He was being mocked, but he didn't mock in return. He was being killed, but he didn't threaten in return. Jesus is just such a powerful example of what it means to suffer for what is right.